Beginner tutorials in Blender can be kind of boring. So in this video, we're going to try and fix that by creating a fun little toy character together. We're gonna to walk through the entire process of how to create this character and also how to get this puppet wood look. So let's dive in and get started. Now, if you haven't already, go download my Crafty Asset free sample pack. It's gonna have some free materials in there that will make it easier to follow along later in this tutorial. I'll also put a coupon in there for 25% off if you'd like to buy the full thing. This video is in partnership with Creality Print. Now I'll put this sketch in the description if you'd like to download it as a reference as well. But first we're going to add a round cube. And if you don't have the round cube, just go to your add-on, search for extra objects and check both of these on. So we'll add a round cube. I'm gonna switch this over to a quad sphere here. And then I'm just going to move this into place using the S key and the G key to grab and scale. And just begin scaling this down and getting it to match the shape of our sketch here. Just going to right click shade smooth there. Then I'm going to switch into top view here and just scale this down just to give it a bit more of an oval shape. I'm going to return to front view mode here. And next let's make the neck. So I'm going to hit shift A and add a Bezier curve here. And I'm going to bring this up, use the R key and just type in 90 to rotate this 90 degrees and the G key here to move this up into place around the neck. And we're going to tab into edit mode here. I'm going to grab all the handles. I'm going to switch the origin point to individual origins and then just scale these handles down because they're just a little bit too large by default. Now I'm just going to use the G key and the R key to just grab and rotate these into a position that kind of fits the neck. Put the bottom point down here into the body and move that top point here into the middle. Now I'm going to press the E key on that top point, which allows me to extrude and create a third point. And again, I'm just going to use the G key and the R key to get these into place. Now I'm going to use the S key to kind of change the shape of the curve there until it matches the outline of the neck. Pop over here to the curve panel and I'm going to twirl down the geometry on our curve here. And I'm just going to increase the bevel shape here. And that's going to give us a little bit of geometry to work with on our neck. Because we've added that geometry, I can see that it's a bit kind of lumpy or flat apart. So I'm just going to adjust this until I have a kind of smooth look overall for the neck. I'm actually going to move the top of the neck here forward a little bit so that it will fit inside of the head we're going to add later. I don't see a lot of people do this, but if you grab endpoints here, you can hit Alt S and you can actually just scale the taper of the bevel. So I'm going to make the base here a little bit bigger and then I'm going to make the neck here in the center a little bit smaller. And that's just gonna give us a nice kind of taper that moves across the overall neck. Next, I wanna add the head. So I'm actually just going to add another round cube with a quad sphere here. And I'm just gonna use the G key here to move this up, switch to wireframe mode, press the S key and just scale this into position. Just gonna kind of match this around the head. I'm gonna rotate it a bit and scale it out on the X axis there. Just get into a position there. There's no right or wrong way to do this part. And then I'm going to tab into edit mode here. And we're going to turn on the proportional editing as well. You can do that by turning it on at the top toggle or by pressing the O key. And what I want to do is in wireframe mode here, I'm going to press C to open the selector here and grab the back end here. Now, if I press the G key and make sure you have that proportional editing on, I can go ahead and just shift the back of the head around here and scale it in slightly and give it a natural taper that falls into the shape of the neck there. Let's take a moment to hear from our sponsor. So I actually 3D printed these little flamingo characters and put them as miniature lawn flamingos in my plant pot. But did you know you can prepare any model for 3D printing in Blender just by putting on a remesh modifier, setting the voxel size to 0.01, turning on smooth shading, and then just export it as an STL file and it's ready to go. And also a special shout out to Creality for sending me the high combo printer. I've been using it to print these little miniature versions of my characters, and I'm really impressed at the print quality and how small the layer lines are, nearly invisible when viewed at a normal viewing distance. It also comes with this awesome filament extruder, which has multiple slots for filaments. You can print multicolored 3D prints. And the coolest thing is I like the slicing software as well. It's super easy to use, has a bunch of presets, and kind of handles all the difficult part of the hobby for you like automatically building trees and automatically rotating your object to be in the best position. I'll link to the printer I have in the comments below. Next, I'm gonna add these little kind of balls protruding out for the shape of the base of the leg. So I'm just gonna add another rounded cube quad sphere. And I'm just going to place this on the side of the body here. 
I'm just shifting back and forth here between the front view and the side view. I'm using one and three on the NumCAD on my keyboard. You can also use the gizmo in the top right. But I'm just going to place these onto the body of the character and hit Shift D and duplicate one to the other side. I'm just going to reuse that sphere. So I'm actually going to hit Shift D and duplicate that and bring it up to the head. And I'm going to use this as a shape of an eye. So I'm going to scale this down a bit. And I'm going to tab into edit mode here. I'm going to use the box select and delete the back half there in wireframe mode. And now we only have half of a circle here. And I'm going to tab back out and scale here in on the Y axis and just flatten that circle. And then I'm just going to move this into place so that it's on the head of our character and can serve as an eye. Next, let's add the beak. Again, we're going to add a rounded cube. This time I'm going to lower the geometry here. And then I'm going to hit Control 2 and add a subdivision modifier. Now I'm going to tab into edit mode here and we're going to delete the top half of the sphere. I'm just gonna move this into place over the head and just press the S key, the G key and the R key just to rotate, scale and grab these, putting them into place. And what I'm trying to do here is just get it to fit into the tip of the head here. I'll just tab into edit mode here and I'm gonna press the C key, which will give me the circle select to grab just the tip here. And in wireframe mode, I'm going to grab these, and move it down to the bottom of the beak here, hit Control R and add a loop in the middle, and then just grab and scale that into position here. So it kind of fits over the shape of the beak. And since we have a subdivision modifier on this, it's going to smooth out the geometry here for us, giving us kind of a natural looking fall off for the beak. Next up is the hardest part. We're going to do the wings. So first I'm going to hit Shift A and add a plane. Now we're going to add some modifiers to this plane. Let's add a subdivision surface here. Set this to a subdivision level of two. And then let's add a solidify modifier. And I'm going to put the solidify modifier above that. And what that should do is give us a kind of rounded looking circle when everything is completed there. But first I'm gonna hide the other objects in the scene so we can focus on this wing. I'm gonna zoom in here and scale this down and get it kind of into a general position of the wing on the bird. I'm gonna tab into edit mode, hit Control R, roll up on my mouse wheel twice, and add a bit of geometry. And then I'll add one loop around the middle as well, and then one more in between there. I'm gonna scale everything down a little bit and switch to vertex mode. Grab this and press the V key, and grab this and press the V key. And what that's going to do is separate those points. And you see it's giving us almost like little wing tip looks, thanks to the subdivision and solidify modifier. Let's grab these top and bottom points here and scale these down, and that'll give us a little bit more of a rounded look. Let's also grab these middle points here and bring these out on the x-axis to further round it out. I'm going to hit Control R and add one loop, but I don't want this edge at the end, so I'm actually going to grab the edge at the end that's on the wing tip and just dissolve that point. Just gives us a little bit more geometry to play with in their middle to kind of shape our wing. Now at this point, I'm just going to switch over to edge selection mode and just begin grabbing some of these edges and trying to kind of round out the shape. So I'm just gonna grab edges and scale these down a bit, rotate them, move them around, and just try and round out the shape of the overall wing. We're just trying to get rid of that kind of square plane that we started with. You'll also notice here that I'm trying to rotate the edges so that the edge flow feels a little bit more natural so there's no harsh changes in the angles, and instead everything kind of just rotates down gently continue moving these around and just rounding out the shape and trying to create a little bit more of a subtle smooth fall off. Then I'm going to switch into top view mode here. I'm going to switch over to the vertex selection mode and wireframe and just begin grabbing these and rotating them into the top view so that they kind of just stick to our character here and it feels like the wing is resting on the body. Also switch views here and just grab a couple of these top points and just move them in a bit closer just to make it hug the body a bit more. I'm gonna switch into top view here and I'm actually gonna rotate my bird slightly just so that we get a little bit better angle at the front view camera that we're kind of planning on rendering from. And next we're ready to begin adding the legs. So I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to add a Bezier line. If you don't see that, make sure you have the extra curves add-on enabled that we showed at the beginning of the video. And I'm just going to search for the line here, which will give us a single curve line there. And I'm just going to rotate this into position here. 
Then I'm gonna tab into edit mode and just begin positioning this on our legs at the correct angle, both from the front and the side view here. Like before, we will go under the bevel and add a little bit of geometry, just add some thickness to the legs there. And then we're gonna hit Shift D and duplicate this leg. Now I'm gonna tab into edit mode here, select everything, right click and hit subdivide. That's going to give us an extra point here in the middle that we can then use the G key to move around in. And what I wanna do is create one leg that kind of looks like it's just hanging up. If you've ever seen a lawn flamingo, they always have kind of one leg at a 90 degree angle there. So I'm just gonna adjust the other leg here so it's straight down and just gives us a nice kind of angled look. So next let's add a cube with shift A. And we're gonna tab into edit mode on the cube here. And we're gonna grab all these top vertex points here. And then it'll select the entire top face. And if you press the M key, you will open up the merge menu. And with all those points selected, we're going to want to do merge at center. I'm going to grab these other two points in the back and merge those at center as well, which gives us a little bit more of an angled triangle. Now with everything selected, I'll hit control B and add a slight bevel. So now let's just get this foot into position. So again, I'm just using the S, R, and G keys to move this into place. You can also use the gizmos if you like. And I'm going to place this on the bottom foot first. So I'm just gonna make sure this is in the correct place on both the front and the side views here. And I'm just going to zoom out here and tab into edit mode, switch to wireframe, grab these bottom vertex points and just shift these forward slightly and then bring these up. And that's just gonna kind of flatten out the little foot giving us more of kind of a traditional looking little flamingo or duck type shape. We'll just duplicate this foot and use it on the other. So I'm gonna add a subdivision by hitting Control one, then Shift D to duplicate, and then just place this foot at the end of the other leg here. Now I'm keeping the origin point at the back of the foot so I can just rotate this and get it into the position I want. I'm gonna grab the leg and the foot and rotate this just a little bit to make it more visible and interesting from the front view and grab this foot and just angle it so it's pointing down and kind of get it into a good position there as well. Now we have all these parts separated right now. I'm going to grab all the parts and I'm going to come up to object and look for convert to, which is down here, mesh. What this is going to do is just apply all the modifiers we have so far and make it so that it's all just one singular mesh. Then I'm just going to grab one random shape hit Control J and join it all into one object. Now, I want this to be two flamingos kind of pointing at each other and forming the shape of a heart with their beaks touching. So we'll grab this here and we're going to add a mirror modifier over in the menu here. And you'll notice that they're kind of intersecting because our origin point is off. So I'm just gonna tab into edit mode here, grab everything and just shift this up so the origin point's here on the bottom. I'm going to hit Control A, apply the location, tab into edit mode there, and then just move this back on the X axis. Now, I'm not super happy with my shape here of how they're connecting, so I'm actually going to add a lattice to the original object and add a few subdivisions here into the lattice. And then I'm just going to grab the bottom part of the lattice here and just shift the overall body forward ever so slightly. And this is just going to make their bodies touch. And you can see that now it's kind of forming this heart shape between their beaks and their bodies. So I wanna take a moment to texture here. So I'm just going to texture this singular object here. So I'm going to tab here into edit mode. I'm going to press U and do smart UV project. This is just gonna give us a lazy UV map. Now, if you downloaded the free crafty asset pack demo file, which I will link to in the description below, you can use some of my free materials here. I'm going to use puppet wood and just drag this onto our object here. Make sure you're in object mode. And now if I switch over to material view, we'll see that it's applied kind of a puppet wood material across the entire object. Now I'm gonna come here to the shader editor and I could duplicate this material and just assign it per object, but I'd rather just do a texture map. So let's look at how we can set that up very simply. We're gonna hit Shift A here, and we're going to add a new image texture. I'm going to click New here. I'm going to call this Flamingo Base. And I'm gonna put both of these at 2048. 
So if I do 2048 there, that'll give us a 2K texture. I'm just going to use a black color base and hit new image. Now I want to be able to see what I'm working on. If I plug it here into the color, I can see that the wood texture is coming through and stuff. So I'm just actually going to plug this into the surface now so that we get a flat color view of it. Now I'm going to tab into texture paint mode here. And if you try and draw, you may see that nothing is appearing on your object. And up here, you need to make sure that you have the correct image selected. So I'm going to select Flamingo Base and just make sure that we are painting on that correct layer. Now we're gonna make this a lot easier for ourselves by just painting with the fill bucket. So we're gonna turn on this paint mask here. And what that allows us to do is if we toggle into edit mode, we can then just select portions of our mesh. So I'm going to select the legs here by pressing the L key and grab everything here that I want to be pink on my flamingo. If you accidentally select something, hold Shift L and you can deselect it. Now, if I tab back into texture paint here, you'll see that just that is selected. And if I come up here, I can grab my fill bucket first, then change this to a pink color and click, and that will just fill everything there with pink. Now I'm gonna tab back into edit mode and grab the legs and the feet here, go back to texture paint mode and do the same thing, but kind of with a orangish color. And you can see now we have that applied to our legs. And in fact, since I'm going for more of a wooden look, I'm actually gonna kind of maybe darken that and allow that to look a bit more like just painted wood. Perfect. Now the beak and the eyes are already black, which is the color I want, but I'd like to add some white accents. So I'm going to switch to the brush mode here. Make sure that I have this set to white, so desaturate and turn this value all the way up. I'm gonna come over here to the tool settings and I'm going to grab the fall off and I'm going to click this one right here. And what that's gonna do is make sure that it doesn't add any feathering or blur to our brush, which is what I want, a sharp line. Now I'm gonna tab into edit mode here deselect everything, and then I'm going to select the eye and the beak. And I have an eye on both sides. And I'm gonna do symmetry across the Y axis here because we wanna go this way. Now I'm going to switch back to texture paint mode. And with that brush selected, I'm going to change the size. So you can just change the radius up here. And I'm going to change this to something really small and just click there, make it a little bit smaller and click there. And now we have a little eye highlight but I also wanna to add to the beak here. So I'm gonna make that radius a little bit bigger and then just kind of paint across there because flamingos oftentimes have a little white piece there. And you'll see here that the symmetry didn't work entirely. So I'm just gonna click there, drag down and do the same thing here as well. So now we have our little flamingo color set up. So let's change this back to the material preview. So I'm just gonna unplug the color from the flamingo base, make sure it's plugged into the puppet painted there, and then grab that texture and plug that into there. And now you can see that we have a nice little wooden flamingo, and we can go ahead and turn our mirror modifier back on. Now, if you wanna learn how to light the scene, I have a couple tutorials on lighting, which would be of great help. Or if you're not feeling completely comfortable with the texturing setup, I also have a couple tutorials here. I'll link to those in the description below.